So, my name is Colin O'Kelly, and this is our UPF Cyber Faith Roundtable for April. This is a bi monthly event, and this is the third one. And uh, the topic tonight in uh, the Cyber Faith Roundtable is going to be presented by Marissa, our Peace Ambassador here in Cavan. And she's talking about uh, mental health issues and uh, surviving lockdown. And it's a very important issue, and I'm glad that she's uh, helping us, facilitating us this evening to talk about these issues. And just to stress that uh, none of us are professionals here, maybe apart from Tinko, who's working on the front line. Uh, and I'd actually ask Tinko just to introduce Marissa, because he knows her for quite a while now since he came to Cavan. And uh, uh, Tinko, would you like to uh, just introduce Marissa, if you have a minute, please? You can hear us. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear? Me? Yep. My computer froze, so actually I don't see any anything moving on my oh, screen. Oh, that's okay. It's a pity. It's now, I think. Oh, yeah, there. Okay. Um. So, yeah, Marissa is uh, quite an amazing person. Uh, that. I got to know quite uh, personally um, here in Cavan through our work and also through many meetings and first private talks. Um, can you hear us, Marisa? Sorry, the sound. Yeah. Uh, your sound is breaking, yeah. We heard you for a second and then it, you disappeared. So maybe we can try to sort it out mm. while I'm presenting. I cannot hear you, Marisa. Yeah, maybe we can't hear you, Marisa. Maybe your microphone, is it is it okay? Or have you muted yourself? I don't see you as muted on our system, but maybe, can you check? It's very weak. Your volume or your mic so maybe you can you hear put up your hand if you can hear us yeah so maybe okay. while you're trying to sort that out maybe uh tinko can give you give a brief introduction yes um <clears throat> so as i said in the beginning it's nice that she can try to fix the uh, the mic um we don't we hope we can help uh from here otherwise maybe i can just drop by quickly after that after that and help um, so Marissa, she is a very well-known well person in Cavan, and uh, this is how I got to know her. Uh, she's helped many people, and uh, I witnessed, um, yeah, how she's really out there. You know, uh, any chance she has to help on like personal level or through community projects, uh, preparing paperwork for projects and assisting people who, uh, and organizations that cannot manage uh, their own admin work or applications. Uh, she's, I've seen her help a lot uh, with that. And uh, it's really inspirational because um, like I've done a lot of, um, a lot of service, work, service work myself. And I know this is one of the most intimidating parts of the work, the paperwork, uh, because very often the grant applications are very complex. Uh, and confusing sometimes uh, if, if you're not aware of all the intricate details. Um, and also the, the way that she helps um, is very inspiring to me uh, because uh, like she does it really out of goodwill. And that's just Marissa here. Like I got to know a lot more about her, um, like her past um, work. Um, she's taking care of many um, orphans as well. Um, and worked in many um, in the healthcare area for a very long time um, in a very difficult country to work in South Africa uh, with all the division between uh, uh, like different skin colors uh, being kind of implemented into the law and social structures of society. For me, it's very difficult to understand many times when she's saying this because it's very difficult to imagine uh, but of course, in my country, 
um, we were most, mostly Europeans, uh, excluding, I mean, like all, all of us were Indo-Europeans uh, with different tone col uh, skin colors, but we never consider ourselves like uh, different classes uh, based on skin color alone. And uh, to have this as a law of the land and to be divided um, uh, into a social structure that uh, really decides your identity based on your skin color is uh, quite difficult for me to imagine. Um, and the stories are very, uh, like at the time of the apartheid, like the stories that she has to share are very um, shocking. So, um, uh, it's even more uh, inspiring for me to know someone like this, who even with this, within this environment was very active and helping and working even in the Mandela party and supporting Nelson Mandela in his work uh, and bringing real change in, in, in South, uh, South Africa. And she, carried this, she carries this everywhere with her. Like if you know Marisa, you know that. And um, yeah, I mean, she's, she's really someone I look up to a lot. Uh, and I'm very happy that she uh, will share uh, her uh, views on uh, mental health today. I know she's also a member of a local uh, church community, a very active one and very respected one. Uh, so that's also part of her life. And um, yeah, I'm really <laughs> looking forward to what she, she will share with us. I hope the mic works now. Marisa, if uh, you're ready. We are here for you. Thank you, Tinka. Are you talking about me? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but that's, that's my honest opinion. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, who is he talking about? Hi, everybody. Good to meet all of you. My name is Marissa. I'm from South Africa. I'm actually trying to switch to my phone because okay. I'm having a problem with the sound, but I, it's not working that way either. Okay. I've been invited by a column and to come and speak a bit about myself and mental health and mindfulness and the lockdown. The sound is off again. Maybe we can wait for you to switch. Switch devices, yeah, maybe. Marissa, can you hear us? Marissa? Yeah, we can't hear you now. You're gone again. <clears throat> okay, we'll wait for you to switch devices, all right? Okay, you, you go ahead and switch devices. Um. Let me try something, okay? What if I phone you on WhatsApp and maybe we'll see what the quality of the reception is like, because we can see you and you can hear us. Let me try, see if that works. Uh, Marissa, there we go. It could be a broadband problem if it is, if it's a bandwidth issue. Hello, Marissa. Are you, have you answered? Do you want to pick up? Marissa, do you want to answer the call? Yeah. Hi, Marissa, okay. can you hear us? Five people trying to get me in the Okay, I got to you first. <laughs> so, okay, she yeah. will speak from my account then. Okay. Yes, you're on, Marissa. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't see you, but if we can hear you, we that's We can see that's you, progress. but we can hear you now. <laughs> Marissa, hi. <clears throat> Okay, so we've, we've lost Marissa again. So just while we're waiting for her to come, maybe she's going to reconnect on another device. Can everyone device. hear Marissa? <clears throat> uh, I'd like to just 
throw the floor open. I see we have a lot of guests here this evening and I'm very delighted you could all make it to talk about this very important issue. And really, I was wondering if anyone had any questions or anything they would like to bring up regarding surviving lockdown and mental health. Is anyone anything that they would like to share regarding this important issues issue? If you do, please uh, raise your hand. I think it's the simplest way to do it at the moment. Okay, Mr. Robin Saban from uh, Austria. Thank yes, you for joining um, us. You have the you? floor, good sir. Evening. Good, good evening and happy Easter to you all. Thank you. Um, short, short comment and then, then along the way I will join again. I think this, this situation uh, give us a chance to do a deep soul searching, uh, not racing against the time and, and, and prioritizing certain things in our life and then get into deep more into us and understand our spirituality as well as prioritize who are much more important in our life than just cut off in this rat race not knowing where we're going and end of the day we come home so tired exhausted not having enough time for our loved ones and our dear friends and and, and family and so on and so forth and personally it gave me a chance to rejuvenate myself by writing, reading, and then and allowing myself to take some more classes and courses online. And of course, I want to do this face to face. There's no doubt about it because the energy having this kind of things uh, in the classroom is much better than online. But because of this pandemic, we have no other choice. But it gave me really a great opportunity to take some more classes, courses, and then and, and, and start writing and start prioritizing my, my personal life, as well as engaging myself with the mo much more social issues around the world and to be much more helpful and to make a difference. This is my case, this is how I see it. Thank you. Thank you, Robin, that's great for sharing. Um, just to let everybody know, because we've had a few people joining, we're just waiting for Marissa, who's having uh, technical problems. Tinko has introduced her already. And uh, we're just talking about various mental health issues and the lockdown, surviving lockdown. And we're asking people to share their thoughts in the Cyber Faith Roundtable. The original idea here is that we all are sitting around a, a virtual roundtable and that we all need to, you know, we shall, should contribute our thoughts. And uh, uh, if anyone has anything they want to share in the group, just like Robin did, please, please do so, particularly while we're waiting for our main speaker today, Marissa, to overcome her technical issues. Um, do we have, if you want to say something, please raise your hand. And uh, particularly if you have something in your faith, if you're a person of faith that you feel has helped you during lockdown, that's something that we, we would like to you to, to channel here today. Uh, see, Marissa's back online. I'm going to unmute her. I'll switch to my phone. I'll Great, you're to... back again. Yeah, fantastic, I'm fantastic. I abandoned the laptop when I moved to the phone, so I'm holding it. So it's not just comfortable, but I'm grand. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so do I continue? Were yes, please. We, we lost you for the last minute of your talk there. So if you want to just maybe, if you can remember what you said from the beginning, because we've had oh, a few new, new joiners as well here. Stuff, yeah. Anyway, I'm from South Africa and uh, I've been here 20 years and uh, all, most of my life, yes, I've been community working, uh, even in my own country. You know, I've always been involved with communities, community work and charities. I did work, of course, and it started off mainly sort of like a pastime you know, weekends doing things. And then of course it moved on from there. Um, is that something I planned or something that I thought one day I would do? It just, the journey just went in that direction. And I guess maybe it was for me because I, every time I try to move away from it, I find myself being drawn back to it. I remember coming to Ireland and thinking, well, that's it now time for the break I'm gonna this is a lovely quiet place but there I go back in the community working again I uh, work with uh, the four C's which is a um, group here in Kevin and we work with people from all different walks of life um, we sort of we community based we try to cover as much as we can we do a lot of training a lot of studies and stuff like that but 
Working like that is, you don't just come across one type of problem, you come across many problems, many problems, and somehow you sort of learn how to deal with it. Most things I came across, I eventually will go for training because I feel there's a need. So I wouldn't be an expert even in this field, but yes, I do work with people who have mental health challenges. And ever since the, the COVID, of course, it's been awful with the isolation and of course, financial worries and all sorts of things that come with it. I know people want to hear a bit about me, but uh, you'll get a bit about me as I go. You know, growing up in uh, South Africa, um, the schools weren't properly equipped and um, mental health issues, challenges were not seen the way it's seen today. And I recall being in school and there was one particular classroom that had an iron, wrought iron gate on it with a lock. And you'd walk past there and sort of peep in. And I remember as children, we'd say, oh, those are the mad ones. You know, as a child, you're innocent. You don't understand these things, you know. They were just the crazy children. And when I think about it now, that breaks my heart because I'm sure they were just lovely children who needed a break, who needed some sort of understanding. But you don't see it. So I'm glad that, you know, as I grew up, things have changed. Even here in Ireland have changed so greatly. And mental health is very important now. And it's not a taboo anymore. It's not something that's demonic anymore. People are learning how to deal with it, how to live with it. And I think that's just fantastic. More power to them as they go on. I, I said, I'm not an expert. I don't know what actually causes it. But in my training, I've come to know that it can be through research also, by reading up researches and what have you. Mental conditions can be genetic. Sorry, someone's tapping my window. So it can be biological. Oh, sorry, sorry. Someone won't stop tapping my window. Oh, it's you. Are you okay? Come on in. It's Tinko. <laughs> I tried to ignore you, but I didn't know it was you. Yeah, there's my laptop there. I'm using my phone, oh, Tinko. Right. Yeah. Yes, you want to check my laptop for me? Yeah. Yeah. So sorry about that. Um, the one thing I have learned about uh, mental challenges is that it's not a weakness. You know, sometimes people think it's a personal weakness. They don't care. They don't want to help themselves and all sorts of things. But uh, I've come to realize that it's not a personal weakness. It has nothing to do with character. It has nothing to do with the way you grew up, your poverty. You know, it's it's got nothing to do with it. And, but we do do that. We say people don't care. They don't want help and stuff like that. So I'm learning too in the process as I'm going along. I'm also learning that it's a, a, con it's a condition that affects the brain. It influences the way we think, the way we feel and the way we behave. And it's it's all treatable. And all can be changed. Of course, there will be extreme cases, you know, in some essence, but I have learned as I go along. And uh, I'm sure the same would apply to most of you. You are learning as you go. So I'm hoping that we'll talk a bit and lead into a little chat about it. Instead of a question and answer, I think we should all talk about it because that's the healing process too. It's just for us to talk about it. Now, there's so many challenges. I've listed some down, like depression, uh, bipolar, just plain anxiety. Some people just stress too much. There's schizophrenia, there's social phobia. I have someone that I'm dealing with who won't leave the house. Just a total fear of being out there and mixing with people. And it's a young girl and it's so painful to, to see something like that. And you get your obsessive behaviors. Uh, I'm sure many of you know one person that's obsessive, won't stop cleaning up or just obsesses over anything. You know, there's your stress disorders, eating disorders. We overeat, 
or we don't eat, which is anorexia, or we eat and throw up, which is bulimia. Okay, and then there's addictions as in addiction. It can be anything. I mean, people gamble their lives away. It's an addiction. Sex can be an addiction. Food can be an addiction. You know, recognizing them, you really have to be good. You know, as I said, you know, when you work, when I work with people and I start to notice these things, then I recognize it as a disorder or a challenge. Sometimes it's something I can deal with, but most times it has to be passed over to the professionals because that's what community work is all about. It's about passing on to the right people and let them deal with the issues that are at hand. We are just there as advocates really to guide, lead, to be like a friend. And of course, sometimes we'll do a little bit more because the challenges faced is a lot of confusion. There's a lot of delusions or hallucinations. People are influ influenced just by the media. The media, they will watch the news over and over. They start to believe that the world is crumbling and it's over. Then there's conspiracy theories. They're stealing your head. They're stealing your blood. And then some people, they believe it. Not because they're weak, because they're silly, you know. Maybe they're just in a, in a, in a darker space. Maybe they have other stress levels. And then you just come and add another one onto it. And then the mind starts to move away from them. Most times there's no aggression. And of course there will be times where there's aggression. I dealt with a young man last year who scared the living daylights out of me. He, there was a lake behind the house and he lived out in the rural area and we were two women. And he wanted to go and drown himself and he excused himself because he wanted to go and end it. And of course we didn't know what to do. Of course, we didn't know. So we prayed. We did what most people do in moments like that. You, you, you just buckle down and just start, start praying. And he turned back and decided to pray with. So even prayer can take you out of situations. Not always you have to be smart and you have to be street wise or you need a degree. And that sometimes little things can help people out of their problems. A lot of people's problems are small, but because they're in denial, they get bigger and bigger. And of course, one of the worst is your drug abuses. I have a few that I'm with, and um, it's not too serious, but can be. Some people are so addicted, there's, there's just nothing you can do. And then they take them off that and put them on the opioids and they addict it again. It's like a vicious cycle of how to, to get them out. As I said, I just do what I can do, but I know where the necessary places are to take them to, to get the professional help. You know, and if any of you are dealing with the communities or people like that, always look up where the help is because sometimes you think you're helping and you're not helping you might be worsening the situation, you know, because I can't diagnose anybody. I can just say, this is drugs, or okay, he's taking drugs, or this is unexplained, or this, is, this person is suicidal. Where do you go to from there? You know, it becomes very difficult, but we do the best that we can do. And uh, I work with fantastic people within the community. The Stanley is there right now. He's one of them there. He does a great job. He works with people who have problems at work, especially in the meat factories. There's a lot of uh, mental challenges, even in that. And being a foreigner can be most difficult. And it's not because you're a foreigner. It's because you're in a strange place. You're in a new place. You're not too sure how people think, how they act. When you're in your country, you're so comfortable. You know, I know what they like. I know what she's like. Oh, I understand that lot, you know. But you're in a different place. So you get isolated. And that's one of the worst things with, with mental challenges is that isolation. The people are there. They're going to help you. But the feeling of the person who's in the country is total isolation. They feel like they have nobody to talk to. And that's 
or the people we reach out to most, especially Stanley, they reach, we reach out to them most because to avoid that decline, that mental decline, is to reach out to them, to hear, and to integrate them, not just make friends with them and help them, is to integrate them into this new society so that people can get on and learn about each other. It helps with the, with, with the mental problems because they just range from worries. And we all experience worries in our everyday life. You know, we learn to get over them, get on with them, live with them. But some people find it extremely difficult, extremely difficult. So as community workers, it's very important that uh, we're there, we play that role and never be afraid of who the person or doesn't matter what their religion is, what their race is. God is one God. You know, if you want to pray for them, pray for them. You know, if they don't want well, then they don't want. Seek other ways of doing things. But reach out because we are human at the end of the day. We need each other. In my country, we say Ubuntu. I need you. You need me. We need each other. So no man is an island. We all need each other. And if we're going to put obstacles in the way and say, well, I don't, I don't speak his language or oh, he's white or he's black or, or whatever, you, you're putting an obstacle there. It never was there until you put it there. So you cannot help that person. And that's when people get so isolated. There's no specific mental challenge that's worse than the other one. The, the mindset is such that if interfered with, it's all the same, all the same. Does anyone want to say anything before I carry on? Please feel free. I probably won't be able to answer a dozen questions, but yeah, I just it will be okay. I'd like to say, uh, I love the, the accent, the South African accent. I could listen to you all day. <laughs> <laughs> and you've mentioned Stanley a few times as well and the great mm -hmm. work that he's doing in the community. Um, but I, I was wondering, did you find any difference with the lockdowns? Did, you, did, that, did your life change when the lockdowns came, Marissa? Yeah, the lockdown, firstly, we are a very active group. And just like you are in your group, you know, we used to go out for dinners in the north and whatever. We were all active. And... Um, when the lockdown first came, you know, I'm a patient in the hospital three times a week. You know, I'm on dialysis. It almost became like I have something to do. So imagine those who had nothing to do. I, three times a week, I go to hospital, lay there. I'm there for about five hours. You know, it's almost like there was an outlet, not the best. Now, I don't want to be sick, trust me. But it's like an outlet. So dealing with lockdown... I think is so challenging for a lot of people. If people can't engage, they, they don't feel comfortable. We are social beings. We need each other. We need to talk to each other. We need to even argue. Have a tough year in there. It's fine. It's good. But just to be stuck with your family, it gets difficult. But it's worse if you're alone. It's worse if you're alone in lockdown and uh, you want to reach out to people in lockdown. You have to Zoom, you have to phone, and they need that personal touch. They need that social gathering. And there's just like nothing you could do. And sometimes I just threw in the towel and said, you know what, if I get sick, I'm sick of and it's not coping with either the anxiety or their depression, whatever it is, and they need to talk to someone. And Zoom is fantastic, and all the others, Microsoft Teams, I never, I'm not a technological mm. person, but it is good, but it can be so tough. And no. lockdown is a change. We were people that met for coffee, had meetings in the town. We did a lot of things, and along came lockdown, and suddenly, I haven't seen people for months and months. We're talking, we're fine, but are we fine? You know, I would love 
just to walk in the town, see your Danka or Mariam or anything, say, let's have a coffee. But it's yes, a lockdown. Marisa. Yeah, we will. <laughs> but it's a lockdown, lockdown. The only thing we can do is do it this way. This is an outlet. The Zoom call we are doing right now is we're talking about it. That's a positive thing. Mm. And that's why I said we should, we're going to turn this into a chat because we, we all need this. Although Thank you, Marcia, yeah. Like we're the ones who are doing this because we know, no, no, we need it too. Mm -hmm. Lockdown is very tough. Family relationships can get intense in a lockdown. It can, it's like being on a deserted island. If you get to work, well, it's fine. If you're working from home, you're also stuck too. So you might be falling out with people in the house. Maybe you need to step back and just go visit a friend and vent a little. You can't. So what happens? The arguments get worse. The tension gets worse. Now, this is someone that you, you're in the house, your, your husband or your wife, your children that you love. And of course you love them. It just gets too much because that's not the norm for us. If that was the norm, then groups of people would irritate us. But our norm is socializing. So being stuck indoors, being isolated is very, very difficult. And um, the complaints that I hear, they just plenty. You know, people are just moaning all the time. And what can we do? What can we do? And the only advice I can give them is, you know, do something to reduce uh, the anxiety. You gotta come up with something. And uh, I was looking up all sorts of things that one can maybe pursue in order to, to take that loneliness away or that isolation. And uh, meditation would be quite top on my list. It's part of the new mindfulness and well being. But we have to accept that there are some people who think that it's not of God or it's not normal. So you can't say, okay, meditation. I personally, if, if you told me you wanted to meditate, I'm happy for you. If you say you don't want it, I'm happy for you. We do whatever you want. But some people find it so relaxing and you know they find that they can get in touch with themselves, talk to themselves. They just need that silent moment. It works for them, but it doesn't work for, for everyone. So you need to look at things. This is my advice is maybe if you have kids, you can play games. That's easy because you have loads of TV games and what have you. Maybe there's uh, something in the house that needs to be repaired and you've been thinking about it. Yes, a good time, lockdown. Get off the computer, start repairing, get the family involved. You handle first the wood, I bang the nails, you know, that type of thing. So I've been giving out a lot of advice like that is, uh, walking. There's no law that stops you from walking, even in the big lockdowns within a certain radius. Walk by yourself, put your mask on, breathe, just do something. As I say, cook. I, I love cooking. That's one of my ways of dealing, you know, and you can, you just have to look at me to know I'm a cook, you know, I'm always cooking, cooking, you know, I love food. And uh, I looked up so many recipes, so many recipes. So I got myself onto a food group, you know, in South Africa, there's two groups where they show off their foods, just joined up, show off, <laughs> make something, put the recipe, show it off, take a few pictures. It's something to do, they respond, you respond back, who knows, you might make even a friend over there. And people ask for the recipes. I also decided uh, during the lockdown, maybe I should take up another language. And uh, I went on to Babel and thought, okay, take up another language, see how that goes. You know, it's something to do. All of this is something to do. And it's, if you're working within communities or working with people, this is the type of things you could offer to them, you know, to do. Sing if you want to sing, read if you want to read, you know, it's boring. Sorry, it got cramps, as boring as it is. Those are the things you can do, you know? So that's me in a nutshell. Um, Thanks, and if there's anything Marissa. else, 
And let me just talk a little bit about mindfulness because yeah. people curse, mix mindfulness with meditation. Not that I have a problem with meditation, but I know to some people do. Mindful, mindfulness is a very straightforward word. It is what it says it is, mindfulness. You know, it's, it's, it suggests, sorry, I doesn't lose. It suggests that the mind is um, attending to what's happening. Um, I think the common word is in tune. You're in tune with your surroundings, you're in tune with yourself, with your feelings. You're not in denial about anything. You're not unsure. If it's good, it's good. And if it's bad, it's bad. Well, I don't know. Well, no. Mindfulness is just getting in touch with that, with that, that sort of like inner self. It's your space. You know, there's so much of it going around. Mindfulness looks at the mind because let's face it, the mind does fly. Have you ever been so stressed that you even forgot where you were? You know, they say the mind took flight. We lose touch with your body. And then you become engrossed in obsessive thoughts. I'm angry. I'm going to get him. I'm going to do that. I mean, you start obsessing about those things. In mindfulness, you learn not to obsess. You learn, here's the stress come. All right, this is the problem. What do I do? Do I meditate? Do I pray? Do I meditate and lift myself up into the clouds or do I ask God for help? What do I do? You stay in tune. What am I going to do? How am I going to get out of this? I need to stop stressing. Stay in tune. This is mindful. It's a human ability to be present, to be in the moment, to be aware of where and what you're doing. And it's not, it's, it stops you from being overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on around you, you know, because when you become overwhelmed, the mind does its own thing. It's like it loses control. So mindfulness has become the new uh, sort of, um, what do you, can I see your word, can I use for treating mental challenges or mental issues? Not, not in a sense that it replaces medication or anything else, but it would be great if people could just learn to tune into themselves, to, to deal with the issue on hand. I know a lot of people I, I, I deal with, you'll be talking about box A, they on box C. Hello, we haven't finished box A. You know, let's just stay with the program. We are here now. They are already racing to the end line or to wherever, because that's how, the, the challenge is in the mind and lockdown has just worsened the situation, especially with loss of income or loss of so many things. So we've been doing a food scheme. Um, we're doing a, a lot of help. I have um, some children in South Africa, I have 45 children that are being kept on a daily basis by someone. They come from a very poor area and um, they stay until about four o'clock and then they are taken home. And most of the parents are addicts, of course, and then others have just lost their jobs. They cannot feed these kids. So they are kept by a, a relative of mine in a center that she runs. And she makes sure that each one of them goes home with the full stomach. That's all she can do. There's probably nothing in the house, but they will come back the next day before school, get a little breakfast. It's just really toast and, and tea type of thing. So I do 20. Sometimes uh, the kids go, maybe the parents move 20 to 30 loaves of bread a week. And uh, every second week I do the fillings. You know, and uh, we have a garden group here in Cavan, the Fair Greens Garden Group. Uh, we grow vegetables, potatoes, and what have you. And we have a little box, and we throw in a few pennies, you know, every week. And then that's the extras for them that we send. And I don't know what their mental challenges are. Everything. I'm not there, but it's just a matter of reaching out because sometimes a little bit of kindness can redirect someone's thinking. It can redirect their entire life. 
just a bit of kindness. Sometimes people don't even need a million dollars or a new pair of shoes or a new lipstick. They just need a bit of kindness that they can go through life knowing that somebody was kind to me, I'm worth it. Because a lot of people don't feel like they're worth anything. They feel worthless, especially when they can't feed their children. They feel worthless. I'm nothing. I can't feed this child. That is one of the worst feelings you'll ever come across with a woman, is if she cannot take care of children. And then if they can't cope, if they can't tune into it, the mind goes and it all falls apart. Now, I think that's about all I should say. <laughs> Uh -huh. As I said, I, I'll go on all day. I never want to do, do any talks, but when I start and then there's no stopping me, I, I sort of start running away, you know? Yeah. And uh, it'd be nice to hear from everyone in an open discussion column if you- Yeah, sure, let's round of applause. Not sure how to unmute everybody at once. And if I'm afraid if I do, I won't be able to uh, mute everybody again, but please, if you have any, I'll throw open the floor. Put up your hand in case I don't see you on the... Okay, we have two people. Robin wants to come in and we have Julie. I might just let Julie have the first crack here and then Odette okay. and then Julie Robin Garland. again. Yes, I know Julie. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Hang on, just unmute you, sorry. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hello, how are you doing? Hi. Marissa, well, very well done on all your... Um... On your talk and uh, all you're doing, even in the community for um, people's mental health, and um, just bringing the community together, it's it's uh, great the work that you're doing there, and enjoy listening to you. Oh, thank you. Great, thank you, Julie. Um, we had who else had a question? Odette, was it? Hi, Odette. Hi. Now, I just wanted to contribute, uh, just make a small contribution as a mother of a, a son that has had um, mental um, health issues and especially during this time of COVID, it's been extremely difficult uh, with lockdown, you know, and um, I just want to encourage other mothers out there that might have um, children that are suffering with um, mental well-being and, you know, uh, mental issues um, just to, you know, keep loving your kids and supporting them. And as a Christian, I believe in prayer. So I, you know, I pray fervently for my son and uh, I'd encourage other people, you know, just to, because sometimes it's even just a phone call that these people need. I ring my son sometimes, you know, and he's at his lowest points. And sometimes he'll give out to me for ringing him, you know, and he'll say, oh, I called the guards on him or uh, I want to bring him back to hospital because he has been hospitalized um, last year. Actually, this, this time last year he was hospitalized. So he'll say, you'll accuse me of, of wanting to bring him back, you know, and um, I'll just speak very nicely to him and encourage him. And um, if he doesn't want to speak to me, I just tell him how much I love him and I'll say goodbye. And then a couple of days later, he'll send me a message, you know. But I know the message comes as a result of that, uh, that um, uh, telephone call that I made or the opportunity to reach out to him. So just, you know, as a bit of encouragement to other people that might know somebody, um, that you know works for me, and I'm sure that would also work. Um, you know, uh, I hope that it would work for you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Odette. I just quickly want to go to uh, Robin, and then we'll take some more observations and comments and questions. Uh, just unmute you there, Robin. You have to go soon, have you? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Marisa, thank you so much for sharing. Yes, lockdown is too long. Isn't this a chance for everybody, it was my, for myself, to reconsider certain things in our life instead of saying this lockdown is so hard? Isn't this a chance that we have to rediscover what we deprived in our life so this lockdown can also let us to reevaluate what we missed in our life or in our personal life 
or with our mm -hmm. loved ones. Yes, I think it's a great time to reevaluate, to tune in, as I said, to tune into yourself. This is a great time. It can be negative, the lockdown, but we can't turn it into a positive. Uh, myself and um, Odette, the lady who just spoke, and Julie, uh, we have a Tuesday group and we pray together. You know, it keeps us going. We, we, we put people's names down who need help, who are sick, who, you know, with COVID and what you, and we get together, we chat and we pray. That's one way of dealing with it. As I said, there are many other ways, but if that suits, it suited us, we do it. Yeah. It's also about reevaluating what, what do we need to do to better ourselves, to better our lives. And we found that to be a great outlet. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have another question here from, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, your, your name is a bit, <laughs> Your, your screen name, I, I'm afraid to say it in case I say the wrong, okay. the wrong thing, but maybe can you introduce yourself? I've unmuted you. What's the name? Well, 2907 is, is the handle at the end of it. I don't know what the name is. Oh, no, I just wanted to say thank you very much, Marisa, for the lovely, lovely words and everybody who spoke my name is faith sitole it's not very difficult to oh, pronounce. okay Faye. thank you yeah sorry thank you sorry. very much that was very insightful that's wonderful thank you yeah um do we have any more anything else anyone wants to share i'm really actually grateful to odette for sharing that because it must be very painful you know um yes. I, it reminds me of my own experience uh, more than 20 years ago when I was hospitalized for manic depression, bipolar. And I just want to offer words of encouragement to you. Of course, you know, your faith is important. Your relationship with God is important, but also people who love you really living their faith and continuing to love you and look after you and make contact with you is, is key here and and please god your your son will will pull out of it it's i i some people think that when you have manic depression or bipolar that's going to be with you forever you know that it's it's a disease and maybe there's an element of that but there are things you can do to mitigate it like i i'm so lucky myself i don't suffer at all now from it but i did suffer very badly in the in the late 80s and early 90s and I'm grateful every day to god for for everything he's given me for my parents who helped me at the time who stood by me and had faith in me. And the nature of something like paranoia, for example, is that you don't always understand when people are helping you. You know, that's what yeah. paranoia is. And, and, and it is an illness and, and it is very serious, but it can be, it's like any, any other physical, it's like a physical illness. You can overcome it. You can get better and prayer and faith, but especially the love of your family and friends is so important. And I, I'm grateful to my wife nowadays because of my relationship. I don't have to really, I never, I never think about these mental health issues. It's almost like it was another person when I was young who had these problems, maybe brought on by drugs or alcohol and different things or obsessive behavior, you know? And, and it is a lot to do with how you think. So thank you so much, Odette. It must be very painful as a parent yes. to, to be so helpless, you know, in, when your son has, mm -hmm. has this. Thank you for sharing with us. I also want to say thank you to, to Odette because I didn't know, realize she was there. You know, I'm just looking at the front picture, which mm. is you, Colm, and I left her in the garden, so I didn't know she made it to get on. And I really wanted her here tonight because to tell her story, you know, because it's so yeah. recent and, and so real. So thank God she made it. And thank you, Odette. Thank you, Marissa, because you've been a pillar of strength to me as well during this time. And um, yeah, Colin, thank you so much for that. But as I said, you know, it's only love. You know, mm -hmm. the Bible says love covered the multitude. And we can't stop loving people because um, their personalities have changed mm -hmm. or their circumstances have changed in life, you know. And society as, as well. I, well, society looks at people with mental illness as sometimes as a threat. And when it's your child yeah. and people are looking at them and, and maybe sometimes they are a threat, that's the problem. 
but okay, oh, if, yeah. if we are looking after them with the with the medical professionals the health professionals mm -hmm. yeah. you know we, we i really am grateful for you for sharing it because it's not easy and actually i don't like to share about this issue and i think people mm -hmm. who have experienced mental illness or or mm -hmm. mental health issues on a scale, like there's a scale, obviously, there's clinical yeah. depression where you can be hospitalized yeah. and people who get, who feel depression <clears throat> just normally and go through very severe depression and never get hospitalized. Sometimes they have even more difficult time because mm -hmm. they never treat it or they never get to the root of it because, it, you know, but um, it's a difficult thing to talk about because if you talk about it at work and, and nowadays in, in, in corporations, they're encouraging you to talk about mental health. It's like yeah. a new fashion but because of lockdown maybe but you know you don't want to tell your employers about these things yeah. or your colleagues because they're going to be looking at you differently as soon as exactly you do. yeah so we need to create safe spaces where people can do mm -hmm. that and hopefully it will become more acceptable it is i hope it is becoming more acceptable does anyone have yeah. any thoughts about that yeah, well, it's changing in the schools, you know. Mm. Children are in the mainstream now. They're not so ostracized. Yeah. You know, I think which is so much helping to be more accepted. Whereas when I was a, a young girl in South Africa, those kids, as I said, were ostracized. Mm. And I mean, it, it was so cruel. I had to grow up to realize how cruel it was to put a lock gate on the door. Like they were going yeah. to escape. Sure. Mm. No. And it is so sad. One of the guys that was in his room is a very successful businessman. Well, the wife and kids, we're the same age, and he's fine. And, you know, if ever I'm in South Africa, we never talk about that. And I always think to myself, why don't we talk about that? Say how I felt and how I felt. Mm -hmm. It's like you can't go there, you know? Something just sort of like stops you because it's like you're guilty. Because I was one of the kids who peeped through that gate to see yeah. all these, you know, mad children. They were not mad. They were not crazy. Mm. They just had learning difficulties. Sure. Yeah. Gerald yeah. wanted to come in for with uh, yeah. uh, a comment. Or thank question. you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for this wonderful discussion. And uh, I, I want to really thank you because it's such a vulnerable topic, as you mentioned before. Um, and I see that I'm a teacher. I work with young students around 16, 17, and especially around the time of lockdown. It's quite a challenge for them because their normal life is definitely not normal anymore. And, and being with friends or, or, or communicating or having, you know, having a, a normal life and a normal relationship with their friends is simply impossible. So I, I, think we all need to become more aware and I think Marisa you're a great example by being open and by really talking to people and being there and not being judgmental but being open and being loving which is which is so needed even more than before and I feel we we sometimes don't see the young people or the younger generation because we're so busy with ourselves we're so busy with you know, holding our lives together or keeping the job or whatever, so that we kind of forget that those are even more vulnerable. And, and I, I, read, I would like to encourage everybody, if you can, have really an open heart and an open ear for those young people because they really, really need it. Uh, and it may need a bit more patience or it may need more uh, you know, hard and love to, to really go to that place. But again, I would love to encourage everybody uh, mm. to be there. And and I think Odette's example was wonderful. Uh, you. When she, said, you know, you. she just calls her, 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 her son and it may not be the call she likes, but she still no. does it. And after a few days, it does come back. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's a really wonderful example. And I would love to encourage everybody to to make that extra step, even if it's hard. Thank you. Thanks, Charles. Yeah, and also not just young people, but I recently I had an experience at work where we were doing a training course about helping older people who have brain degenerative diseases. So I think we should also spare a thought for <clears throat> older people with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's and, and those diseases who are, uh, you know, struggling maybe to do everyday activities like go to the shops or 
And, and it starts off very, you know, they have still a lot. You have to you know, treat everybody with dignity, even if they have such a uh, disease, because it, 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 they can be very well for a long time and then start to deteriorate gradually. So I think if society can become Alzheimer's aware more, that that, that can be wonderful for, for our elder folk and ourselves as we get older as well, you know. Sorry, we have another question here from, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, sorry, I don't. Uh, Nokia 2.3. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, my name is Martin. I'm uh, Mark, welcome. Hi, Martin. from South Africa. Another South African. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another South African. Um, yeah, I, years ago before lockdown. I can't believe it's that. Long. Um, yeah, you touched on a lot of things, Marissa, and. Uh, I think uh, two of the topics that stood out for me was uh, uh, when uh, when we when we see lockdown, we we kind of have a have a have two ways to go. We can either go the dark way or we can go the light way. We can either choose to to go positive or negative. And um, I know from my experience, I've used it to sort of reassess my goals in life, what do I stand for, what do I want, um, what do I want to achieve with my life, what does my life stand for, and all these questions you start thinking about, and you start thinking, am I in the right career, maybe I must change my career, maybe I must do this, yes. and you, you can start molding yourself into a person that you might love or like more. The, the second thing that I think uh, uh, the last speaker spoke of uh, is the teenagers. And I've got two of my own. And uh, <clears throat> now, for all of us adults that are here, if you think back on the greatest, greatest memories you've had, it has all been in your teenage years. Yeah. Everybody I've spoken to has told me their greatest teenage years. And uh, so... It's extra hard for them because they are in a in a place where their emotions and <clears throat> responsibility, they, they have this opportunity to go out and meet people and engage with people their age and they can form friendships and lasting bonding friendships. Relationships form from there. I know me and my wife met when she was 17. So we were friends for five years before, before we got married. But it's things like that. It's memories like that, that they sort of don't get the opportunity to have at the moment. So I feel really, really bad for anyone that has teenagers at the moment. And today um, <clears throat> I had the opportunity to take them to the lake just to get some sunshine because the sunshine's mm -hmm. out this beautiful day. And I could just see the spirits lift in them. Just that little bit of playfulness, the little bit of sunshine, the little joy they had today was enough to lift their spirits. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Martin, Martin yeah. Oh, sorry, Martin, is it? Yeah. Martin, Martin. Yeah. Another, another Calvin man, another South African Calvin man here. Yeah. Look, he is Monaghan man. Oh, Monaghan, forgive me. <laughs> He's from South Africa. <laughs> okay. Um, we're so yeah. I'm just I'm not going to delay people too long. I really I, I don't know how you all feel, but I, I really enjoyed this evening's uh, presentation yeah. uh, once again. Well, and I was hoping before we go to yeah. us from Stanley because he works with a lot. And of I people. was just going to say, Marissa, I'm 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 looking for volunteers for the next one in two months' time, and uh, he's on the yeah. top of my list. So <laughs> little, why don't we hear a little bit from from the, from Mr. Stanley? Go, Stanley. Go. <laughs> the floor is yours. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, I'm very grateful to be here. Uh, when it comes to topics like this, I'm very interested because uh, anything that talks uh, anybody to uplift them from where they, from the bottom of the floor where they are, people are kind of different on, on their stage of sorrows. Uh, I'm very excited. So uh, I'm the kind of person that you can wake me up, my phone goes 
around two a.m. in the morning, and I would jump out of bed and drive to Cavan or wherever it is. So, uh, but mental health is a very, is a very serious uh, issue, and uh, the COVID have kind of uh, blown the whole lead up. And we, we now, uh, for people that think it's um, is a made up story, because I've had that. People think mental health is something people are they just want to you know show off, or maybe they they get into trouble. They just don't want people to know uh, it's real. Uh, we can see it at uh, a different stage. I was going to talk about um, uh, about uh, our kids, but um, you know, Martin went into there to kind of explain. Uh, I know with the mental health issue, adults have been affected, but uh, let's take a, let's step back a little bit. Think about our own kids. We can handle things. We can process things. You know, we can tone down things. But what about our kids? Uh, they've been at home. Uh, for months uh, without seeing your friends, without um, going, they might go out, but you might tell them not to go outside because you don't want them to meet. They, they've been kind of peeled away from their normal life and uh, peeled into a situation where they, they, they've got no control. And to process what's happening, uh, I don't think uh, they're too young to really process so vaccine or keep safe or things like that. And um, most of them, like my kids, uh, uh, my one of my son, the younger one, stays in the room all day, you know, try to play games and all this, but I kind of encourage him. But, you know, that's for me, but I've had other people's kids also uh, behaving up, up from the abnormal, not abnormal in the sense that they're going, you know, crazy, but they've started doing things that that was not, you know, that, that the father have not seen them doing it and uh, there might be a little bit of stress. Uh, my neighbor told me the other day, my, the son wants to go down to Bali Jump Dove to see a friend, and the father wouldn't allow, and you know he got upset. So, and he started acting out. Uh, it, it's, this is the time for us to pay attention to our kids. You know, we adults can process, we have all, for adults we can spot, um, you know, we can spot that when somebody is kind of in need, but kids are very difficult. Uh, they go in, they go into themselves, and they're not, they're not that kind of open to speak out. So it's really nice for we adults to come back again and, um, you know, kind of look into, listen to them, talk to them. You know, you poke them a little bit to see where, what, they, what they feel, how they feel about the whole situation. I tend to drive my kids to the, to the shop and in the car, uh, we have a chat and I said, oh, how are you feeling? I always oh dad oh, doesn't stop please I don't even know you know and uh, you know you just kind of feel and you you explain I do explain I say look it's uh, it's 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 just to keep everybody safe it's going to go away but it takes time so we all are paying our own part in the whole um, in the whole uh, system to keep yeah. everybody safe. Yeah. that's what we're doing so um, just unconscious of the time thank you Stanley thank you very much and I'll be back to you for the with that proposal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just have one or two more people I wanted to get in before we go, because I think nearly everyone has spoken. So maybe Des and then Raffaella, before we wrap up, would like to share something. Des, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, and thanks for having this uh, meeting tonight. And well done, Marissa and Odette and all the other speakers. Um, it is very trying times. I, In my job, I do be ringing people, especially parents that are homeschooling. It's very trying on them at the moment. Or children, that, uh, sorry, parents who have children maybe suffer autism. They are regressing now at the moment, so that, you know. But I think one thing we could do, it, it's great to have the chat today, and I've encouraged other people, just ring someone. Mm. Just ring a friend. Mm. And even someone you haven't rang in a long time. Mm. And I've even one or two of them where they might have had a few angry words last year. Ring them. Reach out to them, as I say. So all you have to do is be a giver. And someone just reach out first and make that phone call. And they could be so delighted to hear from you, so they're good, you know. So I think if everyone uh, has the mindset of being a giver, make the phone call and tell them, of course, that it's, it's okay not to be okay. Now, hopefully try and get them to open up to you, as I say, and say a few words, as I say, you know. So um, that was just my, my small bit. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Des. Uh, I got a phone call from my brother during lockdown and I got a bit of a shock because he normally wouldn't pick up the phone. But it was really nice, actually, and it lifted my spirits enormously. 
Thank you for that. It, it's a really important point. Actually. It's quite a simple thing to do. And I think men sometimes are a bit shy when to go on right. the phone when it comes to just having a heart to heart. But mm. <laughs> if it was the football or something, there'd be no problem. So thank <laughs> you for that, Des. And uh, Raphael, would you like to share something? So I don't want to put anyone on the spot here. So, but just I know that we're <laughs> conscious that everyone has had a little, has oh, uh, shared something. And Terry afterwards as well. Just um, and Halvard as well. Sorry. If you have to go, please go. But if you can stay, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, what can I say? I, I came in Ireland last year in January and uh, I, I felt like I came in a prison without bars. <laughs> for, <laughs> yeah, I just came here and I, I was in lockdown the whole time. So um, it was really good what, what, because I had friends um, where I can reach to, like Marisa, uh, Danny, uh, Stanley, uh, Odette. And uh, I felt blessed, you know, I have uh, the church also, so, um, and I, I know I have God that is beside me all the time, but you see, um, even, you know, being away from all the people, it's really tough, at least for me, it was really, really hard to, um, talk to my family over the phone and talk to my friends here over the phone. And yeah, I, I, ca I couldn't reach to anybody. I am a very active person and I felt like I was trapped inside a house, couldn't do anything. And uh, I'm not very good at uh, over the phone. So mm. uh, yeah, so it was really hard for me to, to be in, in this period of time. And um, yeah, um, I feel like, you know, for people like me, and I'm not that young, and I, I, I I'm a, a, a person that has faith, but for other people that uh, can't reach to their friends, can't reach to God, uh, and uh, especially, you know, being uh, with your family in the house and not being, you know, seeing their your parents that are um, not that confident about this whole situation, and. Uh, maybe sometimes you feel like you're depressed or and you, you can't reach out to your parents sometimes youngster like that um and, and myself i feel i felt like i couldn't uh, bring my mother to say her to say to her that um i'm not feeling good because i i knew she was the same so i i felt like i i put a, a lot of pressure on her uh just saying that i'm not okay you know so other people here felt probably the same and you you struggle with this you know anxiety depression and everything and not being able to reach to your friends to talk about your problems and uh, all these problems are getting worse and worse and uh, i don't know if you you watch statistics but uh, i think uh, the second uh, i think uh, people that died um, Last year, uh, the the person uh, I don't know the number were higher of suicide than COVID. So this is really scary when we think about that. People that really need friends and they have been isolated. You you can't really see the person, um, but ju just just speaking over the phone. So it's it's so hard. You know, um, I don't know if I'm. Maybe I'm, <laughs> I, I'm not very. You're fine, Rafaela. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah I, it's, so, it's so hard, you see, when um, you, you, you can't see each other face to face. It's mm -hmm. so hard to feel the other person and uh, realize the things it's, uh, that person is going through. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Rafaela, yeah. Um, you're highlighting important issues there, especially suicide. And I know in Cavan, the Soul Sad uh, organization are, are very active here, and uh, Christine Wynn, especially. <clears throat> and um, so I, I, I don't know, can we, does, does anyone else, I, as I said, I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but if I'd love to hear any more final contributions from people if they, before we wrap up, um, just to give everyone a chance to say something I, i've gained a lot from listening to everybody's uh, experiences and stories and and i feel 
this is a you know incredible thing we've gone through in the past year and hopefully not too much longer but um not something we've experienced since maybe the second world war we haven't really experienced anything like this i don't know halbert iverson have you anything pastor halbert iverson from bally james duff do you have anything to share with the group You're mute. I think you're still muted. Hang on. I'm trying to unmute you. Sorry, go ahead, Albert. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I must say, I, I learn a lot by listening to people and people's personal situation. Um, myself, I am a person of habit often. So I start my my day with, uh, with a, a long prayer and, and I read in the morning also spiritual things. And then um, I try to think a little more about the people around me. And uh, now we have been, um, since I'm over the age of 70, then I'm pretty much stuck at home. But fortunately, I have a garden that I use a lot. Um, so I don't have any problems with really being alone because, <laughs> of course, I have my wife here, but, but I have always things to do. You know, I look around and I, I repair things. I do things around the house. I do things in the garden. But another thing also is that I believe a lot in prayer. And I've seen miracles happen when you are really sincere in prayer. Uh, I have been thinking a lot about the people I have not been re able to reach, even when I was free to do it. So I've been contacting my relatives in Norway. And um, I've been using email a lot to different people that I uh, know have a little difficult situation. And I get immediately uh, phone calls back and we have a good talk. So very often it is all about reaching out, as many of you already have talked about. Um, the, be, be the word stewards and not just a listener. Someone said a very uh, a good person, Paul. Um, so I think uh, we can do a lot uh, by ourselves, by, by taking the, the initiative to reach out to people. Uh, sometimes, uh, we think we, are, we cannot do it, but actually we get another response than what we really expect many times. So I, I encourage uh, people just to try to contact the people that they know, and especially if they know there's somebody that has trouble. You know? So this time is, is definitely a time to do that. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm conscious that some people's lives mightn't have changed too much with the, with the lockdown um, and other people's lives have been torn asunder and maybe they've even lost people as well so um let's keep them you know that in our thoughts anyone who's lost somebody during this pandemic and you know for whatever reason mightn't be pandemic related um i have another <clears throat> contributor there was it terry did i see your hand up uh, you, you, you don't have my hand up but you have my <laughs> face <laughs> so maybe that's an indication i wanted to speak <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It was it's very very uh, very interesting uh, uh, and a lot to take in. A, a lot of interesting points being made. Uh, I just when um, it was mentioned about having a garden, of course, people living in small accommodation, like a, a, a studio flats or a, a bed sit, and they're away from their family and loved ones in the city, in the cities. I think that's the hardest uh, issue for young people with, 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 with job prospects and everything. There's so much to take in. So, Terry, um, uh, as you've it, probably, as you made me aware, yeah. your connection is very bad. Um, unfortunately, it's... I, I really do hope we we do rebuild. Um, yeah. Usually, usually when I turn off the video, it's better because okay. I'm I'm in my garden shed. Okay. <laughs> I'm in my garden shed. No, that's, that's all. But that, sorry, enough. sorry, I, I. Yeah, it's clear now without without the video. And you're in London, Terry. Is that right? I'm How in London. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but I, it, it's it, it is hard for for young people um, at this time, and especially people um, who've moved to London and they don't have their immediate family around them. Mm. 
that's quite a challenge. Um, but yeah, we, we, we will cope with with, yeah. with, with prayer and and um, and and that spirit and faith, yeah, we have yeah. um, in faith. So okay, um, thank you very much. Thanks, Terry. Thank uh, Terry does a lot of work with the um, UPF in in uh, in Europe and in Britain, and uh, he's doing a project for uh, develop economic development, peace and economic development. So um, thanks, Terry, for that. Um, Finally, then, I think we've heard from everybody. Maybe Bruno, have you? would you like to say something? Bruno Maurice? Maybe, uh, Bruno, if you don't, that's fine. I don't want to put yeah. it on the spot. <clears throat> uh, sorry, I just want to say thank you. Uh, unfortunately, my connection is so bad. OK. Um, I, I, I'm really sorry about that, but uh, it was very interesting. Um, but yeah, thank you. I would, um, yeah. Thank you, Bruno. That's that's wonderful. And uh, Bruno is also doing a, a project uh, for Tanzania with EduCare, EduCare, and he does a lot of fundraising and uh, a lot of support there for education in Tanzania and Vietnam. Um, and he's based in Dublin. Thank you, Bruno. Um, very active in UPF as well. So um, I want to really, I'm really grateful to everybody for coming this evening. I, I hope I've given everyone a chance to, to talk, except my dear wife there. Maybe we'll just sign off with Jordanka. Nikyani, would you like to say a few words? <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'll unmute you, sorry. Thank everyone for your contribution. Can you hear me? Yeah. Of course we can. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Marisa, for your sharing. Once you start going, I, I, I can listen to you all night. So yeah. <laughs> thanks very much. Yeah. For me, um, yeah, I have my ups and downs, and I'm a very social person. So I miss my colleagues, my friends, and as you said, like going out for coffee and just having a, the chat. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, uh Trying to do one good thing for one person every day keeps me going. Yeah. I'm not talking about my family here. <laughs> <laughs> because we are sick of each other. <laughs> no <comment. That's> your <laughs> turn. <laughs> because I'm doing things for them and I don't feel appreciated. She's doing things so she can get away from her family. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> survival strategy, coping strategy. So that's why I go to somewhere else. So this keeps me going and just keep encouraging everybody. Things will get better. They will. But, uh, they yeah, will. it's a struggle, but um, yeah, keep having the faith. And, yeah, it will get better. You have to, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Thanks, Tani. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So. Thanks. I just uh, I'll wrap it up there and please uh, thank you so much all for coming and um, I'm going to post today's session up on unification.ie when I get the chance the YouTube version and if anyone would like to contribute to future events as a participant or as a speaker uh, we'll try and follow the format tonight where everybody gets to chip in with their opinion and their mm -hmm. share something from their heart something precious and if it's faith related great i mean if you don't have a faith that's fine as long as you're a, a real a person who wants to live for the sake of others you know and this is a safe space where where we have interfaith dialogue and we want to talk about important issues and share with each other and make people feel at home here in ireland uh, and uh, try to try to really reach out to each other and support each other and this initiative started during the uh, uh, pandemic so i hope we can continue it uh, in the future maybe even get a face-to-face -face, uh, interfaith roundtable i know tinko is passionate about doing something like that in, especially in cav and through the uh, work he's doing in with the media here in cav and so maybe we can um, yeah, I'll just finish with Tinkle because he introduced Marissa. So I'm going to sign off here and ask people to volunteer if they want to give the next uh, Cyber Faith Roundtable in two months' time. It's usually the first Saturday of the month. So that would be June, the first Saturday in June, of June at 7, 7 p.m. I'll be posting stuff on the WhatsApp group. So anyone who wants to join the WhatsApp group, please give your details to whoever invited you tonight, Marissa or Danny or whoever it was, and I'll put you on our UPF 
Ireland WhatsApp group. So I'll just finish off with Tinko. Tinko, um, thank you so much tonight for introducing Marissa and I'll just let you have the final say there. If I can unmute you, there you go. Thank you, thank everybody. Um, yeah, I, I also was very uh, proud to introduce her and uh, happy to hear her again and happy to hear everyone. Uh, I think it's it's really nice to open the doors the way we did tonight and uh, or windows, whatever, uh, however we feel. Um, and, and just to have the opportunity to be honest about things that are very difficult to speak about. And uh, it's like the elephant in the room. Um, of course, we have the pandemic, but actually, how do we feel about it? No one talks about. We're encouraged by the media every day to um, swallow another day or another month or another few months uh, and and just survive. But how, how does this work? Um, it's really an individual thing for everyone. And, and now we heard all of us speak how it works for each one. And uh, I, I think this is really inspiring to know that most of the time, if you know what people do to make their own life better and make other people's lives better, just reach out and you never know what comes back. And that's really amazing, actually. It's, it's very encouraging. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Tinko, and thank you for your work on the front line and all the frontline workers as well. But each of us, you know, we have to be a frontline worker, I guess, uh, in the sense of reaching out to people in heart. So uh, I want to thank you all very much for coming tonight. And please join us in two months' time and try to connect with the WhatsApp group. Um, that's the best way to keep in touch, everybody. And I'm, I'm delighted to see uh, so, so many new people. And if the topic, if you want to present yourself something, and you know, we'll all help, we'll all, don't be feeling intimidated. Tonight, Marissa was a bit daunted by it, but as you can see, once she started, as Danny said, she couldn't stop. So, you know, you'll find that we, we're all in the group together and we want to discuss an issue and we'll help each other with that. And we'll share together. It's supposed to be a round table format. So uh, it's just, a, so we need somebody to, to push it, to, to get things moving, to, to start with a topic and, uh, to get the ball rolling and if you have a topic that you think is important please let me know and we can we can put i don't i don't have a fixed agenda uh two months out from the next event but as we get closer i i do like to try and set down what we're going to talk about but if you have something a burning issue please let me know and we can discuss that even the same issue again is fine but hopefully we'll be you know we will develop it a bit more but uh, thank you so much everybody and god bless you all and have uh, a wonderful Easter and um, uh, say, I, I was going to say safe home to you and your families, but I guess, I guess you're, you're all at home already. So thank you and God bless you. Good, good thank night. you. Thank yeah. you. Right. Thank Happy you. Easter. Bye. 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 <laughs> bye, Martin, and David. Bye, guys. Bye, Stay safe, everyone. Bye, Ote. <laughs> 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 <laughs>